The reading this morning is uh, from Joshua chapter 8, verses 1 through 7. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to the attack, to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and sent them out at night with these orders. Listen carefully. You are to set an ambush behind the city. Don't go very far from it. All of you be on the alert. I and all those with me will advance on the city, and when the men come out against us, as they did before, we will flee from them. They will pursue us until we have lured them away from the city, for they will say they are running away from us as they did before. So when we flee from them, you are to rise up from ambush and take the city. The Lord your God will give it into your hand. Good morning, church. So we are going to look at our next lesson, ambushing eye, or how to ambush your eye. And um, this city is first mentioned in Genesis chapter 12 with regard to Abraham. And it says that Abraham pitched his tent somewhere between, I guess, Bethel and, and I. And I think that this is pretty interesting that God would make mention of this in, in his word. And then we look at this uh, text this morning. Because I think many of us from time to time, we, we kind of pitch our tents somewhere between Bethel and I. And the significance of that is that Bethel means house of God and I means heap of ruins. And I think that's kind of where we live at times, right? We, we live somewhere between there. And I think it's so sad at times when we consider that we pitch our tent somewhere between Bethel and I, because when we're in between there, we, we don't really have victory, and we really don't have defeat, I guess, to the umpth degree, although we do, because we're not with God. And so this morning, we can either live a life of victory within the house of God, or we could pitch our tent and I and love a life of defeat. And Israel has suffered a great defeat. We saw in chapter seven last week that they suffered a great defeat because of sin. And I don't know this morning what it is that your battle is. I don't know what you are wrestling with this morning. But what I do wanna tell you this morning that, is that you can overcome whatever it is that you're facing, whatever defeat that you may feel you you have had or you are going through, you can overcome that with the help of God. Amen? And so we're going to explore a couple of things this morning uh, through Joshua 8 that I hope will encourage you and that will strengthen you and that you will know and have the confidence this morning to know that you can move forward, that you can achieve the victory in your life and live a life of victory by trusting in the God that you serve. And so let's go to chapter 8 this morning and uh, let's look at, at verse 1 because uh, God promises his people victory. Let's look at verses uh, two, uh, 1 and 2 this morning. Now the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear or be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise, go up to Ai, see I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city and his land. You shall do to I and its king, just as you did to Jericho and its king, and you shall take only its spoil and its cattle as plunder for yourselves. Set an ambush for the city behind it. Now God promises victory, and, and one of the 
the words that he speaks to Joshua is he says that you will win. There's a word of winning here. Do you see that? And it's interesting because God tells Joshua that things will be different this time. Things will be different. And that's how it is in our walk with God is that we cannot expect the same thing to happen. If just because we've gone through a defeat does not mean that we will be defeated again. But what happens is we pitch our tent somewhere between victory and defeat, maybe even closer toward defeat, and we live in such a way of defeat and we never experience the blessing of the truth of God. You understand that this morning? That's very much the way we live. And it's interesting that God takes them back to the very place of defeat in order to help them overcome their fear. And sometimes he's going to do that in our walk, that he'll take us back to the place of defeat because if we don't deal with that and we don't overcome that defeat that we have currently, or that we faced, then we cannot move forward, Right? And we know when we looked at, uh, in chapter 7, how disheartened, how demoralized the nation of Israel was because of the defeat that they endured against I. And so imagine the courage it must have taken as God speaks to Joshua and says, things are going to be different. This time, you will win. Do you see that? And how easy is it for us in our walk with God to just accept that when the reality for us is that we've been defeated. But we have to overcome that and we have to have this trust in God for him to bring about what he says he will do. Notice as he starts off, as he speaks to Joshua in verse one, what does he say? He says, fear not. Do you see that? He says, fear not. Or some of your versions will say, do not fear or be dismayed. And then he says, I have given you the victory, right? I have given you the victory. And I think God is speaking that to us this morning, that wherever you're at in your walk right now, he's telling you, fear not. How how many of us are living in fear right now? Right, many of us. And God is speaking to you this morning, and he's saying, fear not. Why? I'm with you. I'm with you. Because I'm with you, you can overcome. The second thing we see in verse two here is that there's a word of waiting. We need to be very patient in our walk with God. And sometimes we want to rush things along and what happens is we fall flat. Notice that in chapter seven, the sin of Achan was that he took the things that God told him not to take, right? Right? And that cost him his life. And isn't it interesting, if he had just waited, just waited one more battle, he would have received everything that he could ever have hoped for. Notice what God says in verse 2, you shall do to I and its king just as you did to Jericho and its king. What did they do to Jericho, church? What did they do? They destroyed Jericho, right? They destroyed it, utterly destroyed it. But the difference was God said, don't take anything for yourself, right? There are things under the ban that are for me. And Achan rushed things along. And what did he do? He took some things for himself. And him and his family were destroyed. In the very next chapter, God promises victory, but he also promises blessing. Do you see that? An abundance of blessing. Look what else the text says in verse 2. He says, you shall take only its spoil and its cattle as plunder for yourself. Do you see that? So everything that was in that city, God said, will be yours. And sometimes that's how it is in our walk with him, is that we pray and we pray, and God just says, hang on, hang on. But we feel we need to rush things along and help God out. And what happens? Everything crumbles and falls. And so God is saying to you this morning, just wait, be patient. I am bringing about victory. I am bringing about blessing in your life. Will you just wait a little bit on me? Can you relate to this this morning as God speaks to you through his word? The second thing this morning is that God tells us that we need to be confident. 
in pursuing the victory. So when God gives us this word and he tells you that you will be victorious, that you will overcome, we need to believe that and we need to walk in such a way that we believe it, right? And if we look at verses three through 17, one of the things, the reasons that you and I can walk in confidence is because we have God's plan. Do you see the book that's in front of you this morning that you're looking at and following in? That's God's plan for you. And it's a detailed plan that he has given us. And isn't it funny how we continuously try and figure out what God wants or we, 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 we so like confused at times about what God wants from us and yet we have his perfect plan right in front of us. And I want to suggest to you this morning, the reason we are so confused at times is maybe because we don't spend enough time in it. Maybe we don't allow God to speak to us the way he needs us to hear him speak to us. And we push things along and we decide what the text is trying to tell us. And yet this was a very detailed plan that God lays out for them. Do you see in verse two, the last part, he says, set an ambush for the city behind it. So that's the word that he gives them. This is the the plan that he gives them. And then he lays out a very detailed plan of how they will set this ambush. Church, you still with me? Right? And it's no different in our walk with him that when he gives us something that he wants us to do, where he sets out a, a task for us to do, that he will give it a very detailed plan for us to follow. And yet we think we know better than him at times. And that is the reason why we fall. And that is the reason why we do not receive the victory or the promise of victory in our walk with him. Another thing that we need to know this morning is that we must learn from how God blesses us when we follow him. So that needs to be a huge motivation in in our walk with God. As we look and we see how he's blessing us, how he's fulfilling those promises, we need to take courage from that and we need to build on that and be the people that he needs us to be, right? If I asked you this morning, has God ever let you down? What would your answer be? I know that we may be unsure this morning But I'm going to ask the question one more time. Has God ever let you down? Now, I can understand that if people have let you down, that you may doubt them, right? Especially if they've done it a couple of times. But if we're saying this morning that God has never let us down, then church... (laughs) I need to challenge you this morning in a huge way to to say this, that if he's never let you down, then why is it that we would doubt him when he brings about a promise and he says, this is who you are, this is how things will be, and this is what you will overcome? Why is it that we would doubt a God who has never, ever let us down? Think about that for just a second. And I want to encourage us to trust in this God and we serve the God. So learn from how God has blessed you. If I, asked you, if I gave you a piece of paper this morning and I asked you to write down just 10 blessings, just 10 blessings, would you be able to do that? Would you struggle with trying to fill those 10 out, church? Of course you wouldn't. In fact, you'd say, why didn't you give me 50 points that I could write down, Right? And so when we look at this holistically, certainly we can draw courage and strength and confidence from those blessings in our life and how faithful he is in that. Amen? And so as we're walking and we're struggling, God helps us overcome the flesh, right? He helps us overcome these battles that we're facing. And he does it in four ways. There may be more, but there's four things that I want to share with you this morning. The first thing is that he does it through his word, right? And I know that you've heard this over and over and over again. And so I just want to remind you one more time this morning, or at least today, that his word is imperative in your walk. It is so vital for us to be spending time in God's word. And 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15 says that you and I need to study And when you think of the word study, 
What does it mean? It means to study, right? <laughs> but it means to really look deep and go through certain things and then retain that, isn't it? Because the reason we study generally would be for an exam that we're going to write. And guess what? Every single day that we're living, that's an exam, I guess, if you want to look at it from that perspective. We are going through this test every single day of our life. And 2 Timothy 2.15 says that you and I must study to be a workman that is approved by God, that correctly handles God's word. And because we correctly handle, God, because we correctly handle God's word, we will never be put to shame. I'm paraphrasing the text this morning, obviously. But that's what it's telling us. The second way is through prayer, and we've spent so much time on this as well. But 2 Thessalonians 5.17 says that you and I should never stop praying. We should never stop our communication with our God. Right? The third thing this morning is attendance. And church, I want to encourage you and I want to thank you for the way that you have honored God over the last couple of months and the way that you have come in and you have encouraged. And it's always great to see your faces. Yes, even yours, Lol. It's really great to see. It. And I want to just say thank you that you have honored God in this way. And Hebrews 10, 23 through 25 brings about this idea on the responsibility that you and I have on a Sunday when we come together, but also throughout the week, right? That you and I need to be so involved in each other's lives and we need to be stirring one another on to love and good works and, and how we need to be a part of each other's lives. And the reason for that is because you and I are fighting battles every single day. But imagine if we could fight those battles together, how much easier it would be. And for us to try and take on those battles by ourselves. Amen? And the last thing this morning is our fellowship. And I know this church does so well at fellowship. But again, I want to encourage us to really be a part of each other's lives. Right? To have this common bond and this common focus and vision of who Christ is and who we are in him. And constantly remind each other about that so that we can walk in and toward victory. And so God helps us overcome the flesh and he helps us fight our battles and ambush our eye in these four ways. And so when you hear your ministers or your teachers or, or your brethren constantly tell you, well, spend time in the word, pray, your attendance is so important, right? Right? And fellowship is so important. What they are trying to tell you is this, is that I love you and I want you to succeed in your walk with God. Amen? That is what the real message is, is that we are trying to share with you when you hear us speak about these things over and over and over again, right? For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. How much confidence does a child have in his father? I think sometimes my kids have more confidence in me than what they should have at times. But it's that innocence, isn't it? That your God or your father, in this case, can do anything. And there's not a doubt in the world that he won't come through for you. And this text is telling you this morning that whatever it is that you are fighting, that you are struggling with, that you cannot release right now, God is telling you that I'm going before you every single day and I'm clearing the way for you. And what I need you to do is to trust me and just walk in faith. Amen? Because I'm going before you. And he's saying there, the reason he's going before us what? Is to fight for us. Do you see that? He's fighting for us every single day. And the reason he's doing that is because he knows that he is the only one capable of bringing about victory in our life. And he wants that for us. Amen? 
Do you believe that this morning? Because that's what he's telling you. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3. The Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Are you excited about the God that you serve this morning? Are you excited about who you are in Christ? Church? Well, you need to be because this text is telling you that the God that you serve is a faithful God. And what does the word faithful mean? It means able to do. It's the idea that he'll never fail us, right? It's the idea that when he says something, he will do it. Amen? It's the idea that the God that you serve this morning does not, never, ever break covenant. You and I might, but he doesn't. And he says that he will strengthen you. But not only is he going to strengthen you, he's going to do what? He's going to protect you. So he's going to shield you, he's going to cover you during those times that you face those battles. Church, praise him for that this morning, amen? That this is a God that is so passionate about me, about you, that he would choose to strengthen me and to cover me in his love and his grace in order that I might have victory. And he's going to stop us from falling into Satan's hands. I think that's very encouraging this morning for us to consider. That no matter how bad it you've done or how you failed him, as his child, the privilege is this. Church, this is the privilege of being in him. We serve an awesome God. Dawn, he loves you. Skip, he loves you. Russell, he's so about you. And Kim, he wants to bless you. And he's faithful in bringing about that in our walk. Amen? So, as you go this week, as you step out in faith, know that he will bring about blessing and victory in your walk this week. Can we say amen? amen. Because our God is faithful. Praise him that we never, ever need to doubt him or second guess him. And he's telling you this morning, fear not, do not be dismayed, for I go before you. Let's stand and sing. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust in him. <coughs> live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsake. Take me, Jesus, take me now. Oh, I surrender all. I surrender all. 
All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessings fall on me. I surrender, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my Blessed Savior, I surrender all. <clears throat> After our our uh, closing prayer, we're going to have classes in the in the classrooms. <clears throat>